guys, what's up? It's me, Gavin, and uh, I'm doing another guitar video today. It's been about a year since I did the last one. Pretty much everything has changed uh, with my uh, my collection and all the gear I'm using right now. So, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, if you're here for skateboarding, obviously this is not going to be a skateboard video, so uh, you can leave now. I've warned you. Uh, I'll show you the pedals I'm using, uh, the amp I'm using, all that stuff. Uh, but first, I'm just going to show you how I'm recording this. So. Uh, I'm going guitar into my pedal board, so I have a camera set up over here uh, showing you all this stuff. So I'll go through that after I'm done with the guitars. Going into a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. This is like the amp I used to gig all the time. It's a great amp. That is being mic'd up by a Shure SM58 mic into GarageBand with an M Audio Box. Actually, on a side note, I just listened to the full uh, new Queens of the Stone Age album, Villains. Oh, it's, it's, it's amazing, man. It's a uh, I'm going to see them on the 9th, so I'd, I'd recommend you listen to that album for sure. Uh, okay, so this is the only guitar that I had in the old video that I still have right now, I think. Uh, yeah, everything else has either been sold, and I'll, I'll tell you about all that later, but this is my American Telecaster. I think it's from 2014, 2015. Uh, so I've had this for like a year and a bit now, I think a year and a half. Uh, since the last video, I put a humbucker in the neck, so I changed the pickup, and I also changed the uh, the tuning pegs too. Yeah, it's a great guitar. Uh, I really like it kind of clean on the bridge pickup, because you can get that kind of... kind of country sound. It's a really great guitar. Uh, it's been a little bit more beaten up since the last time you guys saw it, but yeah, that's my Telecaster. So we got a lot to get through here, so I'll just, uh, I'll keep the train moving. So this is my Gibson 335. I've had a lot of you guys ask questions about this one. This is my Gibson ES335. It is a 2015 as well. So the story behind this guitar, if you watched the last rig rundown video I made, I had another Gibson 335, it was like a figured top, really gorgeous, and I told you I had that, uh, I got that from the Gibson dealer as a B-stock guitar, so I don't want to go too into detail with this story because it, it's kind of weird, but basically that guitar was sold to me as not being broken, but I figured out that the headstock was actually, had been broken and I wasn't told that when I bought it. Uh, so I emailed the guy and I told him the, the situation and after a bit of a, uh, bit of fighting for it, I, I got this guitar, I traded in the old one, and a bit of cash, and uh, this is my, my 335 now, man, it's, I'm so flippin' lucky to have this thing, man, it's, it's such a great, gorgeous guitar, it's my, it's my dream guitar, and the fact that I can, uh, you know, play it every night at shows and stuff is, uh, is awesome. If I could only keep one guitar, it would be this one, and uh, very happy with how that whole story turned out, but, but that just gorgeous sunburst finish, and the sound of it's unreal, so... This is the neck pickup. I'll just run it clean through the uh, through the amp, a little reverb. guitar. I, I apologize for my, my rough playing today. I always find whenever I do these videos I can never like, I can never play. I'll probably get into the groove in about 10 minutes and then I'll, I'll be playing some nice stuff but bear with me until then. So that's the neck pickup. This is the middle position. <laughs> And then we go down to the, the bridge position, throw a little drive on there. I just love that, that sound you can get up in the neck because it's really just creamy and, and warm. It's, you know, all those 335 tones that you know of, this is it, man. And I, I just love that 
like playing without a pick and just getting that. Yeah, whatever. It's a great, great jazz guitar too. Not that I play jazz at all. I'm pretty bad at it, but uh, yeah. That's my 335. So, moving on, we got a lot to get through. Okay, so this is a weird one. This is a uh, Tokai Love Rock uh, Les Paul Jr. copy. So, this is the only guitar that I'm not actually... I don't think I'm going to keep. This is my uncle's. Uh, he said he'd sell it to me for, for a really good price. And uh, I love it, but I just think for the money, uh, I'd rather just... You know, it's, it's, such, a, it's such a specialty thing. Uh, and I have other guitars that will do this job, so I might not keep it, but I might. Okay, so this guitar has a single P90 pickup uh, in the bridge. So really, it's, it's not, you wouldn't think it's that versatile, but it actually is. You can do a lot with it, uh, just, you know, playing around with the volume and the tone. So if I throw some drive on here. So as you can see, I just had it through like you know a lot of distortion. You turn the volume up and it's just rock and roll all day. But then uh, you turn the volume down and it's just like really great clean sound. So you know more versatile than it seems, but I don't think it's a keeper for me. It's just a little too uh, little too much of a specialty guitar. But I might keep it, and it's I love I love the look of it. Man. It's a really really sick looking guitar. So this is a really interesting one. This is a PRS S2 Vela. Uh, I never thought I'd buy a PRS. This guitar is, you know, it's an American-made PRS, but it's totally stripped down. It's got a tortoiseshell pickguard and like a cherry red finish. Uh, it's got these kind of old-school, like a really fat style, stratty uh, Gretsch pickup in the neck, and then there's Starla humbucker in the bridge. So it's the nicest playing guitar in my fleet for sure. Whenever I play a show, this is really the only guitar I use, just because it's light. It stays in tune. Like I don't have to tune it once during an entire show, and. Uh, it sounds good, I can get a lot of sounds out of it. So, in that neck position, we get that really great sort of... If we throw some tremolo and delay on there... pickup split so we have you can go single coil or you can go humbucker uh, so that totally changed it you can go you can get it kind of sound like a telly because it's got these brass saddles on it so you can really get that sort of if we uh, if we throw some fuzz on and a little bit of distortion from the full drive we get really good like uh, really really great Queens of Stone Age sounds Fantastic, man, and the, the way this guitar plays is like, it's unlike anything else I've ever tried, so that's a great guitar, let's just throw this down here. Alright, we got two more here before we move on to the pedals. This is, uh, when, I was, when I was in the search for a Strat, uh, this is the first one I got, I, I way overpaid for it. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is an American Vintage Reissue uh, 65, so it came with like a white pick guard, I switched it out, you know, just trying to make it look kind of like the Stevie Ray Vaughan sort of sort of deal. But, you know, this is a great guitar too. And this Strat and my other Strat have two very distinct, uh, very different sounds. So I'll show you how this one sounds. This is kind of...
It's a great sounding Strat. It's definitely a, it's definitely a different sound. But as you'll see in a minute, it just sounds kind of thin compared to uh, this next one. So, okay. So some of you guys, if you saw my uh, my my band that video I posted, my band playing at the Hard Rock Cafe. This was the guitar I was using uh, for a long time. This was like my only guitar I used live. It's a it's a custom shop '63 reissue. Uh, you know, all beaten up, and it's a it's a great guitar. It was one of those things. I walked into uh, the guitar shop, poor credit. They've been in one of my videos before. I walked in there, I saw this guitar, it was on consignment, and the deal I, I, I got on it was like, you know, I couldn't really turn it up. It was a stupid, stupid amount of money, but still, such a good deal uh, for what I was getting. And, you know, for a guitar I'm going to have for the rest of my life, I, I love this thing. So, as you'll, as you'll see, or maybe you won't see, uh, this guitar's got a lot more balls than that one, for, for lack of a better term. Like, if you throw a little bit of a tube screamer on there, all of a sudden you're getting a really, really great Stevie Ray Vaughan sort of sound. Try a little, uh... He's just his all this stuff sounds so good on a strat, so that's kind of what I stick to. But yeah, man. So that's the uh, this is my '63 reissue. So I've ran through all the guitars. Now I'm gonna go through the pedals really quickly. I understand this is a, a long video, so if you guys don't mind, so I'm just gonna restart the cameras quick, and we'll get to that. This is my pedal board. So obviously, there's gonna be a couple people watching this video who have no no clue about guitars. So you know, after you plug your cable into this guitar, uh, a lot of people like to go into some some pedals. So these are these are my pedals. Uh, they change all the time. I'm always switching them out and buying new ones and selling them. And I just have I'm filming this with my fisheye. If you're wondering why it looks all weird, uh, so basically when you plug into the uh, the pedal board, these all come separately. By the way, you just kind of you know you buy the board separately and you stick them all on with some Velcro. So once you plug it in, uh, all these different pedals change the way your guitar sounds. So I've been you know pressing these down periodically throughout the video. Uh, they've been changing the sound up. So I'm just gonna run you through each one. Uh, this first one I had in my last video, I think, this is just a Boss Chromatic Tuner. I'm tuned to uh, E-flat right now. I tend to keep this guitar in E-flat with a set of 11s on. I'm usually running either 10.5 to 50s or 11 to 52s on uh, most of my guitars for the strings. These just happen to be 11 to 52s, and I like to tune down to E-flat for that. It just gives a really good kind of loose feel, uh, but you still get that, that girth from the, from the bigger strings. So. Okay, so... On to the first pedal, this is a Electromonics Q-Tron, so this is a uh, envelope filter type pedal. This is actually pretty pretty recent, I've used it at a couple shows, but it's a uh, it's pretty pretty new addition to the board. I like it because of that kind of, I don't know, you can get the, the wah sound, but it's not as annoying as the wah pedal, so, you know. So it kind of sounds like the like the guitar is talking a little bit. It's got that kind of vocal characteristic to it. Uh, there's a lot you can do with it too, but I, I tend to just stick to this sound right here. So I like this pedal because if you throw it on in the middle of a show, people are like, what the hell is that? They don't, you know, it's kind of a cool... You don't want to use it all the time, but if you use it for a couple solos, it's just really fun under the fingers if you're just, you know. I don't know. Cool for that kind of Grateful Dead sort of thing. Okay. Next up is the uh, Solid Gold Effects if 6 was 9. So this is kind of a replica of a fuzz face circuit. So basically, if you turn it on, I like to keep the tone switch over here. Uh, volume about 9 o'clock and the fuzz can vary. The bias switch, you know, I'll show you what all this does, but through a Strat, it's just a, like, just a fantastic sound for all that. Because 
when you uh, when you take this sort of circuit, so the fuzz phase circuit with a silicon uh, transistor, you can go from this, turn the volume down a little, and then. sound too so sometimes you can just leave that on playing a show and you pull back the volume and you get like a really good clean sound that's it's really all you need so this next pedal uh, it's I don't even know why I bought it it's like a Marshall simulation pedal gain a lot it kind of scares me okay next up this pedal if I could only choose one pedal it'd be this one because it, it's got everything it's got a tube screamer circuit on this side uh, this is the soul food electromonic soul foods this is kind of a clon clon style pedal uh, Stuff. Great for using that as a solo boost too. I guess I use it for that all the time as well. Okay, now we get into the fun stuff. Uh, the home stretch here. We got uh, this harmonic tremolo by Catlin Bread. I love this pedal brand. They're expensive, but they're just they're just great sound pedals. So uh, I don't use this one as much, but it's good for kind of Jimi Hendrix style stuff. Uh, you can kind of use it as a univibe. You can kind of use it as a harmonic tremolo. Uh, so it just has that really cool kind of in and out of phase. I don't even know what the hell is doing on the sound, but. Kind of make you sick off of it. It's just like you're on a, like on a boat or something. It's really cool though. I can't really do it justice, but if you can do that really that really good Jimi Hendrix stuff, it just sounds great for that. I'm losing all my licks right now. I can't think of anything to play. Okay, so this is a this is a straight up tremolo. Uh, I was looking. I was actually looking to sell this amp because it doesn't have a tremolo on it. And I love I love the sound of tremolo. Tremolo is basically taking the volume and uh, pulsating it. So if I turn this off and I play a chord. This pedal just does it, and you can adjust it. A really nice, subtle tremolo sounds really nice, so... Uh, That's a great effect. Whenever I'm playing like solo, I always use that because it's just it adds this uh, this this pulsating rhythmic sort of feel to to anything you're playing. It just makes it a little more exciting, sound a little better. I love that pedal, and that's also by Solid Gold Effects. So both these two pedals are the same person. Uh, this is a TC Electronics uh, flashback delay. This was in my last video, so I don't have to show you much about it. But you know, it just gives you a good.
tap pedal for that sort of like uh, slap back effect. So delay is when it plays your signal back for you and you can kind of set the parameters. I have two different delay pedals here, but this one I set as a slap back. So uh, that kind of country. That sort of country sort of sound, uh, you can really get with that slap back delay. I remember Angus came over like a week ago and I started playing that. Uh, He went crazy for that, I don't know why, he just he liked that. So that's how I use that pedal right there. You can get a lot of good sounds out of it though. Uh, last two pedals of the day, this is another Catlin bread. Uh, this is the Echo Rec. So it's kind of a copy of a, a Benson Echo Rec, which was a, I think it was like a quad uh, tape head delay or something. David Gilmore used it a lot. So I, I just use it as like a, a single, single head modulated delay. Really good for just, you know, I can play with that pedal on for just for hours, man. It's a great sound. Uh, last pedal is the Hall of Fame Reverb. This was in my last video too. I just used this for uh, the the modulated reverb effect on here is fantastic. Like just oh, it sounds like you're in a huge room or a huge cave or something. It's a great sound. So, hope that didn't bore you guys too much with that. I know I kind of, this, this video is probably going to be way too long. But, if you're into guitar, hopefully you enjoyed that. And, uh, I'll maybe do one next year. If, uh, if I got a bunch of new stuff. Which, hopefully, hopefully I do. I don't really need anything else, but the problem with playing guitar is you just keep accumulating gear uh, until the bank runs dry. And, uh, yeah, it's a great, great hobby, though. So, if you, honestly, if you don't play guitar, I'd recommend getting into it. It's such a fun hobby. And if you do, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, yeah, man, that's it. Uh, I'll try to make another skateboard video with Angus soon, because I know that that was pretty fun last week, or whenever this is being posted. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, this has been my guitar collection rig rundown 2017. See you guys later.